Hello everybody, welcome to Stunks Music. My name's Ollie, and today we're gonna have a look at EQ3 in this deep dive session. Let's go! Right, so here we are back in the Ableton manual. Let's see what they have to say about EQ3. If you have ever used a good DJ mixer, you will know what this is. An EQ that allows you to adjust the level of low, mid, and high frequencies independently. Each band can be adjusted from minus infinite dB to plus 6 dB using the gain controls. This means that you can completely remove, for example, the bass drum or bass line of a track, while leaving the other frequencies untouched. You can also turn on or off each band using the on-off buttons located under the gain controls. These buttons are especially handy if assigned to computer keys. EQ3 gives you visual confirmation of the presence of a signal in each frequency band using three LEDs. Even if a band is turned off, you can tell if there is something going on in it. The internal threshold for LEDs is set to minus four decibels. The frequency range of each band is defined via two crossover controls, Freak Low and Freak High. If Freak Low is set from 500 Hz and Freak High to 2000 Hz, then the low band goes from 0 Hz to 500 Hz, the mid band from 500 to 2000, and the high band from 2000 up, to wherever your sound card or sample rate supports. A very important control is the 24-48 dB switch. It defines how sharp the filters are cutting the signal at the crossover frequency. The higher setting results in a more drastic filtering, but needs more CPU. Note, the filters in the device are optimised to sound more like a good, powerful analog filter cascade than a clean digital filter. The 48dB mode especially does not provide a perfect linear transfer quality, resulting in a slight coloration of the input signal even if all controls are set to 0dB. This is typical behaviour for this kind of filter, and is part of EQ3's unique sound. If you need more linear behaviour, choose 24dB mode or use the EQ8. So, this is a short one compared to last week's EQ8, and as it says, use more of a DJ mixing tool than it is for an actual production tool. So let's jump into Ableton and see what we can do with it. Right, so here we are back in Ableton, and I've just grabbed two tracks from our latest EP, Divide and Conquer. We've got Clear, and bad news. And I'm cheating a little bit here because both of these tracks are 172. I know they're in 172. I've not had to do any warping, so warp mode is off on both of them. And I've just kind of lined them up into a way that kind of works. So I have a quick little listen. So that works well enough as a mix, but as the manual said, EQ3 is emulating DJ tools. So what would a DJ be doing on this kind of section? Well, there's not too much. We're not doing a double drop or anything, but what would probably happen is the gain low we can grab here and take that down. So this could also be done on EQ8. This could also be done on auto filter, but this emulates the those three knobs that you'd usually have on your DJ console. So. Quite a simple one here, you just take the lows and cut them out. Let's have a listen. And that kind of works. We could do the opposite on here. We could take the highs, and that's where we want it to kick in here. So we could bring that a bit and have those highs. Um, no, let's do the opposite. That's where the highs kick in there. We can grab this one, oh, we should go back. Get our mids, click a node for it there, get our lows, click a node for it there. We can bring this back and we'll take all the lows out and we'll take all of the mids out. So we've just got the highs here and we can have those highs even slowly fading in too. So now we have... So that works a nice bit cleaner. We could also drag this out continuously now that we know that that's going to kind of work and come down to this one and then maybe take our mids out too after this drop. So then we're just left with no lows, no mids. We're just left with the highs. So let's have a listen to this.
and then you'd probably also want to fade that out so we could put a utility in rather than automating our volume over here we could put a utility in and the same way this would be like your dj slider knob your dj slider for volume you could volume automate here as well so we'd have that sounded a bit too much like a fade out we don't want that have it around here Same with this high is coming in, they might not want to come in so steeply. So that's just helped that transition between those two tracks. So if you were making a uh, DJ mix for radio or something that you had to send in, EQ3 is going to be a real nice quick way to be able to get those movements that you want. Um, and that's what it says its main use is for, cutting out these bits of a track. So let's just have another look. I'm going to take bad news and we will duplicate the whole track and delete. Let's just delete it all and bring it back in. It's going to be easier. Delete that. Come back up to EQ3 and drag it in. So the other thing it said is it's good for removing bass and, and highs or removing just the drums. So it might be a case of with this track you want to resample something on it. So let's have a listen. We've got, let's find the old drop. Let's just loop this bit here. So if you want to get rid of some of that grotty middle bass and see what we're left with. So just by getting rid of that mid there, that's got rid of quite a lot of that bass. We could then adjust that a bit more with the uh, frequency low and frequency high. So I can use arrow keys here, click it to go up and down and just see. So do we want to get rid of more of those mids? We could take this down. And if you want to listen to just the low. A snare drum coming in there. So down at 150, you can pretty much just hear a kick and that sub bass going. So let's keep the track playing now from here. And we could then use that to make a remix of this track or do a, a double drop kind of thing. But to grab this one in and try and line them up the best we can. Let's have a little look. There's our one here. though is it so they should be lined up now but we've still got all the lows in here so let's grab EQ3 put it on there and we can simply just turn low off might want to set that to the same 160 so now clear has everything playing above 160 bad news has everything playing below 160 let's have a listen So that's an interesting way to be able to quite quickly and easily chop bits out. So if you just have a listen to clear here, we've got... And actually there's a lot of that kick drum left in that's quite high, so maybe we want to take this a bit higher, see what we can do. So 
we set that to around 900 is that so now we've only got some of that fizzy high end from clear and the dum 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 kick and sub from bad news let's have a listen to that together there's probably going to be a gap in the middle now we can look at span and see how bad that is That's a good way to start if you're trying to mix these two tracks together or if you're trying to make a remix or make a, a mashup or something. And then it gives you this space in the middle to work with. So at this point we could take Bad News up to say around 900, wasn't it? And then let's see what we've got here. Now you've got a double drop there that's actually not too bad. I don't know if that's technically a double drop, but we've got two tracks playing and quite simply using the EQ3, we can carve out the space that we want the other track to be sitting in. So bad news as we see, we've only got L turned on. It's only letting the lows through and we've adjusted where that low frequency is and clear. We've only got the mids and highs and we've adjusted where those frequencies are. So I'd say that is the main usage for EQ3. That's what they say in the manual it's used for. If you wanted to use it to uh, EQ your drums and stuff, it is another one like the channel EQ that we looked at before. It gives you a broad range to work with. So if, if we were to grab a kick drum that we've made before, let's come into here, DMB, one hits, kick, DMB kick, processed, let's grab these kick drums here. You only want one of them, thank you very much. So we've got this kick drum here. Bring it to its own channel. Right. And turn both of them off so we've got. And you. See you later. So we've got this nice kick drum here. And if we were to grab the audio effect EQ3 and decide I want some more boom on that kick drum, we could turn, if we turn both of these off, we can just hear the lows. So those frequencies, if we want to boost them, we can boost them by 6 dB. So it's quite subtle in its way that it only gives you a small amount of boost. We could also turn the others down if you wanted to emulate uh, boosting that more. Uh, or we could listen to just the highs. Let's see, yeah, we don't really want much of that at all. Turn that down. So the EQ3 can still be used to shape sounds. Uh, same as the channel EQ. I just think that actually probably you're better off with the channel EQ or the EQ8 if what you're doing is looking to EQ sounds and get certain sounds out of something. The EQ3, I, I'm seeing its main reason really being for live situations and emulating the middle of a DJ console. All right, guys, that'll do it for this episode of Deep Dive. As always, project files are available in the description. Let me know in the comments if there's something you do with EQ3 that I've missed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring-a-ding-a-ding -a -ding that bell if you want to see more of our videos, and I'll catch up with you guys next time. Bye.